Good day, everybody. Welcome to Handle Barber Dave's Barbershop at Home. And today we're on straight razor shaving number 102. And uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to review 101. We're going to talk about shave journaling or vlogging uh, to help you in your straight shave journey. Uh, we're going to talk about inspecting the blade because at this point, if you're following the curriculum, you should be in about 14 days uh, into your shaving. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're also going to talk about working on smoothness. Uh, a great straight shave is nothing more than a dance between your hands and your face and the blade and you really want to become as one with the razor as you can with the razor just being an extension uh, of your appendages so to speak. Uh, then we're going to introduce the final pass which is the across the grain or side to side pass. This is the one that can get a little bit tricky uh, and then we're going to do our cleanup with the DE. So the only thing we're going to be using the DE for today is cleanup and that's it uh, and then eventually we'll phase that out completely. We'll do the complete shave demo and then the next step is 14 days days of practice. We will not be dropping any more videos until next week, so that'll give you some time to catch up or to at least get started on the practice journey. And like I said, the, the 7, 7, 14, and 14 are really important to set a strong foundation uh, for, uh, for your shaves. So let's go ahead and review a little bit about what we did yesterday in Shaving 101. Uh, we talked about the hundred, you know, the hundred shave threshold and the lore surrounding uh, straight shaving, uh, and it's pretty accurate. Most people around a hundred shaves start having those epiphanies. Some have it earlier, some have it later. Uh, so that one hundredth shave is a nice goal uh, to get to. Uh, we talked about bowl lathering versus face lathering. It's still, uh, you know, just an option. Um, I find that the bowl lathering. Uh, is a little bit too aerated for a straight razor for me, and I prefer face lathering, but that's entirely up to you. Uh, we talked about blade angles and technique again. Remember, you want to set yourself as a fulcrum, whether you use the three-fingered position or the two-fingered position, but you want that wrist as straight as possible and to have the fulcrum right here at your shoulder. Now, with the across the grain pass, you're going to be hold, we're going to introduce a whole new way of holding the razor, as well as you're still using that shoulder as a fulcrum. Um, we talked about the angles, meaning that you want to have it roughly one spine width off your face, roughly 30 degrees. Uh, we introduced you to the against the grain pass, which is straight up and how to hold the razor that way. We did the shave demo and then you've hopefully been practicing for about seven days. So let's talk about shave journaling as we start uh, Straight Razor Shaving 102. Journaling, diaring, vlogging, however you want to do it, is a great way to keep track of your shaves. Now, I recommend those of you on the cadre uh, go into some of the older journals and look at their first shaves, especially with straights. And you're going to find it not only entertaining, but you're going to probably pick up little tidbits of what they're doing wrong, what they're doing right, and the epiphanies that they have over the first 100 shaves. Uh, the nice thing about that is, in my opinion, you should be using one system for at least the first 30 days. Uh, so, you, like I said, so you don't have to worry about. Uh, soaps, brushes, anything like that. Use one system. A little bit boring, but hey, what the heck. It, it gets your system down because all you're worrying about is technique. But by doing those shaving journals or even videotaping like this and videotaping a, a vlog, you can see what you're doing. And that's why I prefer the vlogging is because you can actually see what you're doing and you can compare it to those folks that have been straight razor shaving for quite a long time or compare it to these videos. And that can give you a very good idea um, how well you're doing and the epiphanies that you have and the stumbling blocks that you have and plus, uh, you know, the train wrecks that you have, which are going to happen. So that's why we recommend uh, journaling or vlogging uh, because it keeps track of your shapes uh, and however you want to do it is entirely up to you. Let's talk about inspecting the blade. Now, what I recommend, and I couldn't find it this morning, uh, is get yourself a very inexpensive loop, like a jeweler's loop. You can find them for five bucks in some places. And all you need is a 10 to 20 times loop. And what you're going to do is, after, after each shave or after every couple of shaves, you're going to inspect the blade itself. Now, that's going to give you an idea on how the blade is wearing. Because what you'll start seeing is you'll start seeing channels and then you'll probably start seeing some chunks. Now, not big chunks, just little microscopic chunks out of the blade. And that's what, when the blade is teething, uh, more or less than anything else. And stropping, you can see where, you know, you're effective with the stropping. You're not honing yet, but it'll give you an idea. So you want to inspect the blade. Uh, and what you want to do is inspect it from the toe across the heel. Make sure there's no marks here. Uh, inspect the toe itself and what you're looking for to make sure that you're also drying the blade correctly is you're looking for black spots what they call dalmationing because this is stuff that's actually eating into the blade and you don't want that to happen so you want the blade to be shiny 
You want it to be uh, very, very sturdy. Uh, check the flexibility of the blade and then look at the blade itself. Then you want to look at it head on. Is there any warping issue? Because that could be causing some, especially with those older ones you may get from Whip Dog, the geometry of the blade may be off a little bit. So look at that. Uh, look at the pin area on the front pivot just to make sure it's tight. Also make sure that it's centering correctly. And look inside the scales. You shouldn't have any soap buildup or any rust starting to form around the pivot points. If so, you need to dry that off and then just the overall condition of the blade itself. Do you do it after every shave? Sure, you can. You don't have to, but um, I usually do it after about every 10 shaves is really give it a good inspection. But I also do some maintenance after each shave, but we're not going to talk about that right now. We'll talk about that later on in um, some of the advanced um, some of the advanced uh, modules starting next week. Now, as far as becoming one with the blade, uh, so to speak, or smoothness, when you're working on your smoothness, and you'll see this in the shave hopefully today, it's more or less a dance. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Flip. One, two, three, four, five. You know, so it's however you want to do the timing of it, and it's going to be slow and steady in the beginning, but it's a dance. It's a dance back and forth, up and down, and across your face. Uh, once you get that, you'll actually feel that this is, an, uh, is basically the razor is an appendage, and you're just following your hand around your face. So that's what we mean by working on smoothness. Now, that means you know short controlled strokes, or once you get a little bit more experience, you can extend those strokes a little bit. But try to you know have a song in your head, play some music uh, while you're shaving. Uh, all of that is going to help you with your smoothness because the one beauty about music is music has beats. Those beats can be followed. Um, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and you can get smoothness that way. And uh, it's it's something I highly recommend, especially in the beginning. Now, there's two sets of arguments. One argument says, well, if I have music playing, I can't hear the blade. Not worried about whether you're hearing the blade right now. That, that will go and come further along where you want to feel exactly how uh, efficient the blade is becoming. That's when you're shooting for BBS or higher, and we'll talk about that in later modules. Okay, so now let's talk about the big thing. Uh, we're going to talk about the across-the-grain um, pass. Now, remember... Once we get into beard mapping in uh, SRS 103, that may change some of the things you're doing. We're going to do it on the on the assumption that uh, it's the average, which uh, with the grain is down, against the grain is up, and across the grain is side to side. Now that may be different for you, and it is different in a lot of ways because on the bottom part, across the grain is very, very difficult. We're gonna do it up here, but then we're going to do a modified against the grain, which is across the grain for the final pass. So what I want you to do before you start anything is take your straight razor and flatten it out. Once it's flat, take your index finger and literally wrap the blade around your hand. So it should look like this with your finger up here. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to create basically the most vertical position you can because you're going to be shaving this way. This is the best way to do it is just by really putting your fingers high up near the toe as you can, closing the scales, and then using the rest of your fingers for balance. Now, none of this is tight. This is very light, lightweight, but it'll help you with the across the grain pass. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start at the top and we're going to be coming this way. Now I'm going to be doing it cross-handed because that's what I'm going to recommend. Then you're going to pull your ear up, come cross-handed here, and then a little bit along the jawline. And then we're going to switch back to the against the grain, or the uh, across, excuse me, against the grain, and we're going to go at an angle up towards your ear. And it'll make more sense um, when you see it. So that's pretty much it for uh, uh, 102. Um, we're going to go ahead and do the demo shave now. Once again, if you have any questions, just uh, just put it in the comment section. And hopefully you're making sure that you're keeping your face very well hydrated in the beginning. We're going to talk more about prep uh, in the upcoming uh, episodes and the introduction of a hot towel uh, we'll talk about. But right now we just want you to concentrate on technique. I'm um, using the same system as I have been. I will be face lathering. So we hope that you've enjoyed uh, Shave 100 and Shave 101 and Shave 102. Uh, we hope that it's been informative and comprehensive because a lot of straight shaving videos out there just basically show the guy shaving. They don't go into the mechanics of everything. And that's fine. You know, that's all fine and dandy. But what we wanted to do is do a comprehensive 
um, tutorial where you can take things step by step at your own leisure. Now, if seven days is not enough on practice 100, then extend it to 14 days. If uh, seven days is too much practice on 101, then back it up. But you want to have at least 30 days under your belt practicing these techniques before you start moving on to other stuff. Okay, we're going to face lather today. And hopefully you're also working on your technique as far as lathering is concerned. The first pass, you want to spend as much time as possible on. It's probably the most important. And especially for this is the first shave that you new straight shavers are going to be doing with the actual straight razor. We have been doing it to where you've been doing the first pass with the DE, which means that you're shaving off the first, you know, you're, you're reducing the whiskers on the first pass, making the, the straight razor a little bit smoother. So this is going to be the first shave that you're going to be going straight from, uh, you know, right to shaving. So that's going to make a big difference and it's going to feel different too. So you want to spend as much time on this lathering and getting the lather slick enough, thin enough and so forth to where uh, that razor is just going to glide. and incorporating that water into the, uh, the pores and the face and everything else and integrating that into the soap so it becomes that slick, reflective look that you want. And as I said, the lather for a straight razor should be a little bit thinner, a little bit wetter, almost to the point of breaking breaking the soap in my opinion uh, if you can now depending on the soap that you use you may never be able to break it because there's some soaps like this that will take as much water as you want to give them which is a good thing because you can get that really really super slick uh, feeling okay that's about ready now I've already stropped uh, the razor uh, 50 times on the jean strop I'm staying with the program just so you guys can see I'm, uh, you know, mapping out where I'm going to be shaving, which I think is a good idea. Now, once you get experienced, you probably don't have to do that as much. And we will also be stropping uh, between each pass. So you want to keep the blade wet and you want to have your sponge or your, your wiping medium, whatever you decide, right handy so you can keep the lather off. And I will be doing this per norms rather than the way I do it. We'll introduce the cross face shaving a little bit later. Okay, here we go. Remember, keep your hands over the top, grab. If you have to use the, um, the alum, use the alum on your fingertips. Just make sure that you don't get it into the soap because it will eat the soap away. Don't forget to uh, keep the blade wet and to puff out your cheeks if you need to. And if this helps you, you can think of it this way. Uh, stroke, stroke, wipe, wet. Stroke, stroke, wipe, wet. And that'll keep you, you know, well, so stroke, stroke, blade fills up, wipe it on your sponge, wet it again. And that can help you. Um, if that cadence helps you, that's fine too. Now, if you notice on the chin area, I, I use my dominant hand to do the right side of my face. Now, this is part of that cross shave, that cross face shaving, but it just works best for me. 
because if you're trying to do it this way, you're also blocking it. You can't see what you're doing. When I think the cross face, you can see exactly everything you're shaving. Now, when you get to the chin, just roll like you're stropping. And that'll help you make that curve. And also be careful when you're up near the lip because um, from experience, I can tell you if you cut your lip, it's going to bleed for a long time. The ear is the same way. Okay, congratulations. There you are. You did your first pass without a DE assist on your face. And that should feel really, really good right now. So make sure you rinse your face well to keep everything hydrated. Go ahead and uh, wipe your blade off a little bit. And we're gonna do 10 laps on the jean strop to keep the edge smooth. So here's our jean strop. And I must say that also, if you're traveling, a jean strop is the best way to go. Okay, there's 10. Now remember on the stropping, just to show you, slow and good pressure. One, one two, three. Rolling the blade in your fingers like you would a pencil. Okay, we're going to do our against the grain pass now. And for this, the paintbrush strokes should be more than enough. Because you've really dug in to your follicles and gotten the hairs all ready to go and soft. Um, so give the, give the face a break. Because what a, a lot of people don't realize is you're taking out a ton of moisture. Um out of your face when you're shaving. You know, hence why we put so much on post-shave. Post a little bit dry. There we go. Okay, again, we're gonna map out where we're gonna be shaving. And I just think that this is a good idea because of the guide that it sets for you. Keeps you away from certain things. Okay, make sure your scales and your hands are dry. Put alum on if needed. Make sure your blade is nice and wet. And let's start with the against. Now, when I do against the grain, this is where it starts because it's very hard to do it this way. So I am doing the cross face. Dominant hand, opposite side of the face. When we get into the beard mapping section, we'll talk about setting quadrants in your face. And that'll also help as well. Switching to the non-dominant hand, cross face. Now with the ergonomics of your hands and your neck, that's where you're gonna start feeling the hyper stretch is what I call it. And then it helps um, because that area that you just shaved is gonna, if, if the soap is done right, everything else is gonna be pretty, pretty good. And if the razor is taking everything off, it's gonna be almost dry. It'll feel moist, but you'll be able to put your hand on it. When you're doing it in this area where you've got curves, you're going to rotate a little bit, but rotate not at your wrist, rotate at your forearm. Remember, this part should be solid all the way across. And then, of course, if you're going to be shaving, obviously, the mustache area, use your the front end of your toe 
work up this way, work up this way. Okay, again, congratulations. You've now completed your with the grain pass with no DE assist. Go ahead and rinse. And your face should be feeling pretty, pretty uh, slick at this point. However, if you're feeling any stinging at all, or if you're feeling a kind of a roughness when you do this, then that means you get too much pressure on the blade. Lighten up your pressure. Remember, you don't need to have any pressure. If the blade is cut well or honed well, it will just glide across the face. Uh, you need to have just a little bit of pressure as you're bringing it across your whiskers. Okay, so dry your blade off. We're going to go ahead and strop one more time between pass, 10, 10 laps. Okay, there's 10 on the jean. And I decided to do it on the jean because it's what you're doing. Yeah, you know, you probably don't have a strop yet. Okay, so we'll go ahead and wet your face again. Now comes the against the grain pass. Now we're gonna take this one very slow. But when you're lathering, go ahead and lather similarly to you as you did in the first pass. Because now that we've reduced the riskers twice, there's only a little bit left. So you wanna kind of stimulate those follicles and that tissue to constrict around them so it sticks them straight up. And then of course finish up with your paintbrush strokes and don't be afraid to add some more water uh, to make sure it's super slick. Cause this, this is probably the most dangerous pass of all of the straight raising cause you're getting very close to uh, ears, noses and uh, other things so you want to make sure it's super slick but for this i would definitely recommend using the alum for the first time uh, to make sure that you're holding on to the blade because the blade like i said is in a different configuration and also the mapping or excuse me the the outlining of where you're going to shave is super important make sure the front and the back side of your ear is uh dry because you're going to be using that as a stretch point now if you have i forget what the medical term is but Disconnected earlobes, it makes it a lot easier. If you have connected earlobes, eh, a little bit different. Okay, so make sure your blade is dry, that your, that your uh, hands are dry. Now this is the first also where it's a full pass in the cross face technique because I feel it works better. Okay, so remember what we told you about. Your uh, pinky on the tang, two fingers, and then your third finger a little bit higher up on near the toe because you can get that vertical edge. What I recommend you do is grab your earlobe, pull it up and back, and you're gonna expose this area right here. So you're gonna come up. Very lightly, because that'll get that area. Now you're gonna take your ear and you're gonna stretch backwards, and that's gonna stretch this while moving your chin. Come very lightly right here to get that area. Blow up your face. And then take your middle and your ring finger and start pulling backwards. And you're pulling. Now, when you get to this area down here, your jawline, this is where a lot of cuts can happen. Go ahead and grab your ear, pull it back, and then take your fingers and do this and pull up and back. Let go of the ear. Stretch here. Come across the bottom of your chin. Still using your left or your dominant hand and the, and the opposite side, then we're gonna go to here. Once again, take all three fingers, stretch your face back and fight against it. And then, like that. Now I attack that in two sections because there's still a shelf there. So even when you do that, you got two separate angles. So you want to make sure that you um, get that too. And you can do one with the toe, one with the toe, one with the, uh, with the heel, but just be careful when you do that. Now for the cross the grain pass on the neck, you're going to go back to holding the razor like this. You're going to use the back part of your hand and your finger, grab right at the jawline and pull up. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be going across the grain that way. And 
And as you get close, just move your hand up and remain that tension all the way up. Same thing here. Grab with your fingers. And halfway up the face. Here, pull down. And that's it. That's your cross the grain pass. Do it again on this side. Switch hands. This is where it's going to feel really awkward on, a, on your, um, your non-dominant hand. But you'll get used to it. Again, pull the ear up and out or push it in if, if it needs to flatten. Stretch and blow. Same thing, pull back on the ear. Make note of any moles or anything. Take your two fingers, pull. Let go of your ear, pull here. Wipe, wet the blade. Once again, back to your um, against the grain handle style. Take your forefinger, flatten it, and pull up. And you're, you're going at an angle towards your ear. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> wet the blade. Wipe it, and then what I do, just something extra, I wouldn't recommend at the beginning, just wet it, and then I do the same thing here. <coughs> Excuse me. Just to get everything there. That's it. Congratulations. You have done your first three-pass shave without a DE assist for the actual main part of the shave. Now, we are going to show you later on how to do cleanup, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, how to do cleanup with a uh, straight razor. But for today, we're going to do cleanup with a DE. Now, traditionally, when you're first learning the, the cross the grain pass, you're going to have some whiskers here. Some whiskers here. You may have a couple around here and then right in the Adam's apple area, probably from the points of your chin all the way down and then across. Now we're gonna show you how to do that with a straight razor later on. Those are some advanced moves and those will cut you if you don't do it right. So today, what we're gonna do, is just put some lather back on and we're gonna do some good old fashioned DE strokes. Now, if at the end of the day, it's your shave, at the end of the day, if you don't want to ever do cleanup passes with a straight, don't do it with a DE, doesn't matter. But so holding them very lightly, just come across the grain. And then if you want, you can do your J hooks, do your blade buffing. and that'll clean you up. Same thing on the other side. Now try, even though I know it's tough, try to switch hands. So you still get used to that using both hands. Now normally all this you'll be doing with a straight razor. And like I said, we'll show you that later on down the road. Now, what I would do at this point is, enter, is introduce alum to the mix. Wet it, put it on your face. How's it feel? Is it lighting you up? Is it not lighting you up? Because for the first 14 days that you've been shaving, I guarantee you, you've got irritation. But by now, your technique should be getting fairly good enough to where you don't get it. But use the alum, see how it feels, leave it on for a few seconds, and then rinse it out. But this will give, the, the alum will give you 
an indication on where you're doing good and whether or not you've got too much pressure uh, with a straight razor. Because remember, with a safety bar, you can get away with it. Um, you can actually push that in and still be okay uh, for the most part. You can't do that with a straight razor. You push in, it will cut. As uh, they say on Forged and Fire, it will kill. So you want to be careful with that. Follow up with a balm or whatever system you're using to make sure it's moisturizing. Um, I would use a balm in the beginning because the alcohol is going to dry you out a little bit much and probably sting like you know what. So I would definitely uh, do a balm or a, a, an aftershave of milk, uh, something natural, which hazel would be good. Okay, so there you have it, folks. You've done your first full three-pass shave with a straight razor. Congratulations. Hopefully it went well. Um, we hope that you've enjoyed the first three sections of uh, Handle Barber Dave's straight shaving method. We're going to drop three more videos next week. And remember, 14 days of practice with this shave. So three passes with the grain, against the grain, cross the grain, clean up with a DE, practice that for 14 days, and then uh, hopefully when we drop the videos next week, um, uh, you're following that pattern. If not, uh, we're going to get into some more advanced techniques. So I've been Handle Barber Dave with Handle Barber Dave's Barbershop at Home. Have a wonderful day.